we want you to take a look back on your youth to early adulthood. Have you ever made any big financial mistakes that may have been prevented through learning basic financial skills? However, how many of you in your early teens would have tolerated sitting through an hour-long lecture on bank accounts and budgeting? Honestly, we're not even sure if we would sit through that today. Hello, we are Anactus Dalhousie, and this year, our team identified a gap in the way financial literacy programs are delivered to school-aged children. The problem? The programs are boring and therefore ineffective. The solution was to teach financial literacy in a fun and comprehensive way. So today, we will be introducing you to our new project, Cash Grab. This project began when we worked with a nonprofit organization called Penny Drops that brought fundamental financial literacy to kids in high schools through student-led workshops. Through working with Penny Drops, we discovered that students' deficiency in basic financial concepts primarily stemmed from a lack of financial education at a young age. While workshops were comprehensive and educational, our team noticed the disengagement from kids we were speaking to. Boredom leads to poor retention, and studies have revealed that students in lecture-based learning are 1.5 times more likely to fail a class than students in active learning courses. We wanted to do more. What if we could find a way to incorporate financial education into something fun and relevant to kids at an even younger age? So, what do kids love doing with their free time? Well, it turns out that kids spend an average of 15 hours a week playing video games. So we thought, why not utilize this time to teach kids about financial literacy? Our opportunity came when we partnered with two computer science students who had recently developed a video game prototype centered around financial literacy. By working together and refining objectives, we created a video game called Cash Grab. The objective of Cash Grab is to teach financial skills that surround the idea of opportunity cost, saving, and risk to children's age 9 to 13. The game interface is the main player going to work in an office for the day. There are 10 days in every game, and each day has a timeline. During a day at work, the player must collect coins as their salary, which they can then choose how to spend it. We also created two complexity levels, basic and advanced mode. In the basic mode, the players learn how to spend their money on simple choices such as going to school and missing a day of work so that they could earn more coins in the next round. In advanced mode, the game presents more complex choices such as buying stocks, taking loans, and using credit cards where they must pay their fees on time. As opposed to traditional methods of learning, players actually put into practice financial concepts that yield virtual results. Above all, we wanted our players to feel empowered to apply their skills to everyday life. But how would we measure that? To test Cash Grab, we set up a focus group to test our game's effectiveness at achieving our objectives. Our focus group consisted of two elementary school boys, Ethan, who was 11 years old, and Carl, who was 13. Each subject was asked a set of questions beforehand to gauge what they had already knew and what they had learned. Both boys quickly learned that paying for school and missing a round of work would be a wise investment. When asked what he thought the purpose of the game was, Carl replied, to know how much paying for school might affect you because you miss a day of work. The purpose is to look at long-term and short-term problems and how you should save for them. Both boys demonstrated knowledge of not only saving more, but why they should save that money. Additionally, when asked about new concepts learned that may be applied to everyday life, Ethan replied, I learned how to properly save money and how credit cards work along with the risks. We were excited by the positive feedback, and by the end, both boys eagerly said they wanted to play again. Ethan even suggested a leaderboard so that you could see your peers' scores. Although our project is still in its development stage, its potential to have a greater impact is incredibly exciting. In the upcoming months, we plan on bringing Cash Grab to elementary and middle school classrooms where they can use our game to teach young students core financial principles. We also plan on providing a debrief at the end of each classroom session to ensure these children fully understand the principles they are learning. By bringing our video game to school classrooms, we can shape the way financial literacy is taught, from a passive method to a more active one, so that kids not only know financial principles, but also how to apply them. Cash Grab is so much more than just a video game. It is a way of connecting with the younger generation and showing them that learning financial literacy can be fun.
Most of us don't mind paying a little bit more for convenience because we love everything that's fast and easy. Fast food, fast cars, and even fast money. The world of easy money has transformed Canada into a debt nation. According to a recent survey by Manual Life Bank of Canada, two in five Canadians don't expect to ever escape their debt. Missing credit card payments, racking credit card debt, using one line of credit to pay off another has become a necessity of the modern life. This makes us question, are we doing enough to ensure our future generations don't fall into the same never-ending spiral of debt? Hello, I'm Bethany. I'm Lena. We are an act of St. Mary's and we are empowering our Nova Scotian youth with the knowledge, skills, and confidence they need to make informed financial decisions through our project, Options Youth. In partnership with Service Canada and St. Mary's University Entrepreneurship Centre, we've created Options Youth, a program designed to equip at-risk youth with the personal and professional skills they need to successfully transition into meaningful long-term employment and become financially independent. Here's how the program works. Each cohort consists of a group of at-risk youth who have a barrier to employment. This could be non-completion of high school, a self-identified disabled lady, or previous incarceration. We work with organizations like YMCA's and the Phoenix House to identify candidates who are then interviewed to become part of the program. Youth are selected based on criteria such as eagerness to become employed or a self-identified barrier to enter the workforce. The 20-week program is divided into six weeks of skill training, followed by a 14-week work term. We break down financial literacy training into multiple workshops like budgeting, taxes, investing, and understanding how credit works, some of the most essential skills that are often not taught in high school. This year, we revamped our program to add even more workshops that will enable our youth to save money and live on a budget. We facilitated workshops on affordable, healthy eating to help build responsible spending habits. Our participants absolutely loved learning how to make quick and easy meals for themselves. We integrated social loans into our program to help avoid payday loans. Participants use these small interest-free loans to purchase essentials like food or even pay for rent. We provide one-on-one -on -one coaching to explain how micro-lending works. We even create a repayment plan for youth using a budget that works for them. Hey, hi, my name is Jordan. I'm a participant in the Options Youth Program here. I've gained a lot from the program. Uh, one major thing was having a place to go early in the morning. It has given me a sense of consistency, which has been great for my mental health and gives me confidence that I'm able to do this in the future. Uh, another great benefit was the social loan, which allowed me to catch up on some bills while I'm waiting for my pay and also encouraged me to pay things off on time. We are constantly growing and improving our already successful project by gathering feedback from the youth. We use standardized self-assessment for our participants to measure the success of each cohort. Recognizing that not all youth with barriers require six weeks of additional support, we created WorkReady, a branch of the currently successful Options Youth model. The WorkReady program is for youth who don't necessarily need six weeks of in-class training but require a helping hand in finding employment. We provide the support that they need to enter the workforce. After 10 successful years, we financially evaluated our program and recognized that in-class training is expensive and not available for everyone. We identified this as an opportunity to innovate our program to provide scalable and accessible financial literacy training not only in Atlantic Canada, but coast to coast. With RBC's initial investment of over $7,000, we adapted our global award-winning program into a free online platform, Options Online. Modules are gamified with the youth in our program receiving financial rewards after completing each milestone. In addition, we just got the word that Service Canada is investing $800,000 to extend the program over the next three years, impacting over 60 additional youth. We're now using technology to empower Canadian youth to make sound financial decisions by making quality financial literacy accessible to everyone. Option Youth has been empowering Canadian youth to monitor and improve their personal finances since 2008. We are tackling six of the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals by providing financial education that empowers our youth to create positive changes in their lives. This year, we've lent over $4,000 in interest-free social loans, trained 57 at-risk youth and employability training, increased youth income by over $130,000. Option Youth has used entrepreneurial leadership, business principle, and innovation to create sustainable positive impact. But more importantly, we've empowered tomorrow's leaders with the skills they need for their financial independence.
welcome judges to the CWB Financial Education Challenge. 31% of Canadians say they struggle to meet bills and payments. More than 80% of Canadians who have debt owe money on credit cards. Young Canadians need help managing their money, but where do we begin? Three years ago, Enact is Clarable focuses attention on developing Dollars with Cents, a financial education plan which targets students enrolled in grades 3 through 6 in our community. Dollars with Cents introduces children to different ways they can earn money, how they can reach their financial goals with their money, and how money is a reward for working. This year, we have made some modifications to our program based upon feedback from our students, parents, and educators. We are happy to say we have returned to Anthony Patton, our initial pilot school, to pilot our improved version of Dollars with Cents. Dollars with Cents takes place over a three-week period. In our first session, we discussed with the students what they know about money. After this, we had the students decorate three jars with save, spend, and give. This helps the students to see where their money is going. We also assigned the students their chore diaries. Throughout the week, they performed chores at home or in the classroom and had their guardian or teacher sign off on them. Each completed chore was worth $1. In our second session, we introduced the Enactus store. Each student can purchase one item from the store. The student who had completed the most chores purchases first. We also talked about needs and wants with the students. As well, we gave the students a spending diary to record their purchases over the following week, giving them a better understanding of what they spend their money on. In our final session, we discussed with the students what they had spent their money on and allowed them to go to the Enactus store final time. Afterwards, we discussed charities that they could donate to with their remaining money, as well as the money in their gift jar. Through this, the students understood the concept of sharing their money with others. We use social media to keep in contact with the parents, which allows them to post about their children's progress at home. Now let's... Um, I like the Nactus very much. Um, I like if you guys have a next year, I'm going to do it again. And my favorite part about it was um, where we got to learn how to save and give money. This year, Enactus Clarable expanded its financial literacy program to support persons with disabilities and or mental health concerns in managing their money. We partnered with the Ability Employment Corporation and its Linkages program to create the Dollars for Life program, which focuses on adults aged 18 to 30 years. Dollars for Life is a series of workshops that helps them understand how they can make decisions to support their financial future. This year, we were really fortunate enough to have the Enactus group as part of our monthly personal development sessions. Uh, for some participants, the Linkages program functions as uh, their first exposure to employment, and for others, this is the first time they've even had things like a bank account. So having the Enactus group attend the personal development sessions to provide education on things like budgeting, uh, living on a fixed income, how to grocery shop on a limited income, it really helps the participants develop uh, tools and skills that will assist them both in their personal and professional lives well beyond. Uh, the completion of the program. Dollars for Life took place over four workshops. In our first workshop, we discussed the basics required to set up bank accounts and the importance of saving up money. During the second workshop, we focused on budgeting and meal planning. We discussed the importance of how a budget helps you spend only the money you have by keeping track of the money you have coming in and going out. Keeping track of expenses is the first step towards financial sanity. Our participants were given a budgeting worksheet to complete over the next month. They had to write down what they thought each of their expenses for the month would be, and then at the end of the month, they recorded their actual expenses, seeing where they under or overestimated those costs. In the third workshop, we discussed pursuing post-secondary education. The focus of this workshop was on who am I, what are my opportunities, what do I want to become, and what is my plan for achieving my goals. In the final workshop, we hosted an interactive real-life fair with our participants that incorporated lessons learned throughout our workshops. Our participants chose a profession and based on today's economic forecast, were given a realistic monthly income. These participants then entered our fair where many real-life vendors had set up. They moved from table to table where they were expected to pay their bills, buy groceries, and more. This year, Enactus Clarable has executed two financial education programs, reaching 40 participants, generating $250 in savings with our Dollars with Cents participants, and helping 20 Ability Employment participants prepare for the next part in their lives. We are Enactus Clarable and we are making a financial impact.
A recent study states that Canadians produce more garbage per capita than any other country on Earth, amounting to about 35 million tons of garbage per year. It is clear that recycling needs to become more of a focus among all Canadians. One way to tackle this issue is through the act of responsibly recycling unused textbooks. Each year, university students are often required to purchase the newest version of their textbooks. Students are then left with textbooks from their past years that can no longer be resold or reused. As a result, thousands of textbooks are thrown away each year, contributing to Canada's total waste. We at Enactus Mount Allison have developed a project to combat this issue head on. My name is Alicia, and today I present to you Textbook Osmosis. Textbook Osmosis, or TO, was created in 2016 with a multifaceted approach to fulfilling two needs, the lack of access to educational resources and eliminating textbook waste. We collaborated with three organizations this year, including the Multicultural Association of Greater Moncton, Youth Impact Jeunesse, and Textbooks for Change. Our donations and collaborations allow these organizations to promote financial literacy and youth empowerment within our community, thus contributing to our goals and mission within Textbook Osmosis. We have found that students are willing to donate their textbooks if they are going to a good cause. Knowing this, we initiated a campus-wide call to action for textbook donations from students and faculty. TO collects these donations and operates on three levels. First, we resell textbooks at an affordable price. Textbooks no longer in demand by students are donated to organizations all over the world through our partner organization, Textbooks for Change. Finally, the remaining textbooks are recycled in a responsible way to decrease the level of textbook waste that has posed as a problem within our community. We reached out to students through social media campaigns to raise awareness for textbook osmosis. We hold donation drives each year to encourage students to donate their unused textbooks to a good cause. This year, we have donated over $2,000 worth of textbooks to various organizations who, through our donations, were able to create unique education plans tailored to their needs. We have also donated over 400 textbooks to Textbooks for Change, an organization that supplies textbooks to schools that demonstrate a need globally. As an entrepreneurial setup, TO is able to provide a source of income and resources for these organizations. TO can be replicated on other university campuses and is able to help a wide variety of organizations and causes. TO is expanding into other markets that require financial literacy education and textbook resources, such as local penitentiaries and women's shelters. Furthermore, one of the key advantages of this project is that it is completely self-sustaining due to the constant flow and demand for textbooks. This past year, we focused primarily on organizing our inventory. We donated textbooks to organizations that promoted financial literacy and recycled those that were no longer in demand. We cleared up space for future donations, improving the efficiency of our project and preparing it for future endeavors. Our next goal is to coach the youth in our community to recognize the importance of financial education and how it can aid them in achieving freedom, independence, and success in their future. Overall, we've impacted two organizations by assessing their needs. We have collected over 100 textbooks from various disciplines and have generated over $700 in profits this year alone. We have improved social assets by helping bring together members of the community to experience education. We have improved physical assets by providing a large number of resources to organizations and recycling them when necessary. And finally, we have improved financial assets by establishing financial literacy training programs and contributing to other educational initiatives. Together, we can teach financial education to those in need. Together, we can improve the livelihoods of individuals within our communities. And together, we can build an educated tomorrow. Together, we can.
19.2% of Newfoundland and Labrador's population are between the ages of 15 and 19. Most of these students are preparing for a post-secondary education away from home and don't have the access to resources regarding financial literacy. When surveyed by the English School District, high school students have expressed their desire to learn more about managing their money. The current high school curriculum does not provide students with the information required to make independent financial decisions. Enactus CNA St. John's provides financial independence to students through our Independent You Project. Presenting for you today will be Amanda, Sarah, Candy, and on tech, Alicia. Students in Newfoundland and Labrador will undoubtedly face financial burdens as they will now have the responsibility to pay for expenses that they didn't have before. Students are relying solely on the public education system to receive information about financial responsibilities and post-secondary opportunities. There are entire graduating classes completely unprepared for the financial obligations they will face upon leaving high school. In this regard, the system has failed them. Independent U is a project designed to connect with high school students in Newfoundland to empower them to make intelligent financial decisions. Since the beginning of this year, our project has been delivered to 133 students in grades 9, 10, 11, and 12 at different schools across the province. We've also indirectly shared our passion of financial literacy with individuals including parents, teachers, and other support from the education field. The Independent U Workshop is delivered in a three-step process, gauge awareness, develop knowledge, and assess results. Step one begins with a pre-survey testing the student's knowledge base of financial literacy. We follow the survey with a short quiz to get the students thinking about finances. Step two builds upon the student's financial knowledge. We introduce the students to financial concepts such as loans, credit, interest rates, scholarships, and bursaries. We explain effective ways to save money, how to record cash flows, including monthly incomes and expenses. We then walk them through a budgeting activity which clearly portrays the financial realities they will soon face. Step three, assesses the effectiveness of our workshop with the post survey. This is where our team really has the opportunity to see our influence on the students. By evaluating their budgets, we discovered students projected an extremely high deficit. Through our interactive workshop, we provide realistic information to apply to their budgets. This year, we have taken on an interactive approach with the students by using a live internet survey for our pre and post surveys through a program called Poppin. With the current graduation of students being invested in technology, it attracts their attention more easily. Poppin helps us accurately record our results to measure the effectiveness of our presentation. Doing our surveys online is also a more green approach, reducing our paper usage and waste. Another way of assessing our impact is through our teacher feedback forms and our pop-in survey database. Really, um, budgeting activities and they compared costs, I guess, that they had estimated with actual costs. I think and that was very eye-opening for some. Uh, also, um, the group presented and told them ways they could save money and emphasize that. This branch of the Newfoundland Department of Education provides students in remote locations with education opportunities. Students who avail of this extremely valuable resource were able to participate in our workshop from their computers at school. Allowing our project to evolve like this has provided us with the unique opportunity to reach students in a number of schools all at once while maintaining the integrity of our interactive workshop. This has allowed us to maximize our reach while minimizing our impact on the environment. Last year, we partnered with the Newfoundland and Labrador English School District and are continuing to work with them to become endorsed. We stand confident that our project will be included in their yearly curriculum in the near future. NLESD also has a Skype classroom platform that we are looking forward to using in order to reach parts of the province that we haven't been able to reach before. Enactus CNA St. John's as champions of independence aim to empower youth to make confident financial decisions on their own, helping them to be prepared for their future.
Half of post-secondary students do not know where their next meal is coming from. That is food insecurity. In some of our First Nation communities, poverty affects the majority of our children, and we know that this continues into adulthood. We know students who get on a bus at 6 a.m. to begin their day. Some have breakfast, some may not. Some will go hungry without lunch, returning home 12 hours later. Maslow tells us that our very basic needs for food and shelter must be met before we can accomplish much else. Concentrating while in class when you are hungry, near impossible. Here are some heartbreaking realities that are happening on our campus. We've had students share their stories with us. One student told us their unemployment insurance benefits were cut off and their job options were limited because of being in school. What limited money they had needed to be spent wisely and meals weren't their priority. When we discussed the problems we could solve in our community, we realized food insecurity was hitting close to home. After doing some research, we found that there are many supports in place for early and secondary education, but not so much for post-secondary students. Many struggle to meet the demands of adult life. We know our physical and mental health is affected when we don't have consistent access to healthy food. When students have food insecurities, they may have much higher rates of anxiety and depression. Students are also at greater risk of deferring their studies or reducing to part-time. Unfortunately, some will drop out so close to realizing their college dreams. The research shows that those who manage to stay in school, they are receiving more C's, D's, and F's. Food banks are common on college campuses, but research shows that they are underutilized even though the need is there. Students are making the choice between food and textbooks, rent or heat. We are in Actus Marconi and we are fighting the battle on food insecurity. This semester, we launched the Meal It Forward program. The goal is simple, improve academic success through nutritious meals. The spin-off, social interaction and a sense of belonging. Our program allows students to achieve their full potential increase in attendance and academic performance. If a student is hungry, there is no need to stay at home. A hot meal is waiting for them on campus. Students can now have lunch with their friends. Here's how the program works. Enactus Marconi raises funds each month to purchase $30 meal cards to distribute free of charge to students faced with food insecurities. To respect a student's confidentiality, Anyone can request a card through a student services advisor. These cards are the same cards widely used on campus. This is an anonymous program and we will never know the names of the meal card recipients. In one week of launching Meal It Forward, we raised over $1,500 and purchased 50 meal cards. Within five days of making those meal cards available, not one card remained, telling us the demand is greater than we ever imagined. These meal cards provided up to 300 meals for hungry students. Our short-term goal is to provide 2,500 meals during the school year. The long-term goal, increase graduation rates by 5%. When we started the program, we thought it was a local problem. But we soon learned that this problem exists across the country on all campuses. We applied an innovative solution to this problem. We also learned new skills such as fundraising, marketing, and financial management, and we're helping students to manage their own finances. We have developed best practices for this program and encourage all post-secondary institutions to connect with us. We'd like to share our program with others. Meal It Forward is not just a meal card program. It is also an awareness campaign. We are talking about an issue that many students are afraid to talk about. We are breaking down the food insecurity barriers and we project the campus food banks will be better utilized as more students ask for the help they may need. Half of post-secondary students do not know where their next meal is coming from. We are solving that problem and sending students on to realize their dreams of graduating from college and university. We are Anactus Marconi. <laughs>